Okay, so I'm going to use the course description as a point of departure. I've highlighted computationally associative design. So what does that mean? Let's look at a couple definitions. Associative, pertaining to or resulting from association. So when I think of associative and associative design in relationship to grasshopper, for me it's all about relationships. So for example, if we look at a line, a line has a start and an end point. And there's a relationship between those two points and the line. As the start and the end point move, the line moves with it. To add to that relationship, we can place a point on a line. And now we have the beginning and end points, the line, and the point on the line. Those three things all making a relationship. The second term is parametric. A variable that must be given a specific value. For example, if we look at a cube, a cube has a length, width, and height. And we can change those parameters. We can change those values. They're variables. Now those parameters can also have a relationship with one another. So they can become associative. Meaning, I have a width, and the depth can be the width times 2. I have a height, the height can be the width plus the depth. So we form the relationship between those three parameters. Okay, so what is Grasshopper? Grasshopper is a plugin for Rhino. It was created by David Rutten, a computer scientist architect who wanted to write a visual scripting interface that would tell Rhino what to do. Now, I don't think he had an idea specifically of how this would evolve and who the users would be because Rhino is not just for architects. It's for jewelers, it's for ship designers and aerospace designers, but it seems that Grasshopper really took off for architects. And what's happened now is there's a number of plugins for Grasshopper, all with these amazing animal names like Gecko and Kangaroo, and some are not animal names. We have Karumba. Here's a screenshot of a good sample of plugins for Grasshopper. We have Centipede, Goat, Mosquito, Beaver, Firefly, and so on. So what's happened is Grasshopper has spawned this new world of plugins that basically tell Rhino what to do. So let's start with the feel. And last lecture we talked about the object in the array. So let's take a look at this in Rhino and Grasshopper. So our object is the airplane, and our field is the array. So I can control this array via this parameter. And what this parameter is controlling is it's controlling the count in both the x and the y direction. So this definition is, it's not about relationships. It's not associative. There's no relationship between this airplane and some other piece of geometry. It's really just parametric. I'm only able to control the count in the x and the y direction. Let's look at a definition that's more about associative design or more about relationships. And we can use the example that I talked about earlier where we had a line that had start and end points and the relationship between those points and the line and then we can let that relationship evolve and start to introduce more points and lines and see how they're connected. 
So I'm going to start a new grasshopper definition and I'm going to start by constructing an XYZ point and you can see this point now shows up in Rhino at the origin at 0, 0, 0. I can start to introduce parameters that move this point around so this is moving it in the X direction back and forth it's like watching a ping pong game and I can introduce another parameter that will control its movement in the Y Okay, so let's think of this as the start point of the line I can copy and paste this and this can be my endpoint and I can draw a line between those two points so now we have a relationship as these points move the line moves with it okay so we can copy and paste this portion of the definition and this is going to create a second line okay so at the moment these two lines are independent there's no relationship between the two there's no association but we can create that association by hosting a point on each of them and then drawing a line between those two points so I'm going to start with the first line that we drew and to place a point on that line I need to evaluate I need to evaluate the curve and that may seem confusing because it's a line that we're working with and I'm now calling it a curve but remember we're working in Rhino and Grasshopper and all the geometry is NURBS based it's non-uniform rational basis splines so everything is drawn as a spline and those splines have different degrees of curvature so we can make a spline into a line by reducing that degree to zero or one so let's go ahead and evaluate this curve now what we need to think about when we think about this curve is not the length of the curve in terms of distance but we need to think of the curve as its domain and that domain is from 0 to 1 so the beginning of the line is 0 and the end of the line is 1 so if I want something about halfway on the line I can double click and add a number slider set to 0.5 and that's going to host a point on that line and I can move it from the beginning to the end and I can do the same thing if I copy and paste these two capsules and I'm going to replace my input with my second line and I can change its position on that curve so still two independent lines what I can do now is I can associate these lines and create a relationship between these lines with another line that goes between the two points that I just created so I'm going to bring out a line capsule and I'm going to go ahead and connect those and if I look back at my original points as I move those points around this line that I've just drawn moves with them so this is now associative this is we have now created a hierarchy, a relationship between these points and lines. So let's look at creating a constellation using points and lines. So I'm going to start a new definition in Grasshopper. The first thing I need is a boundary for my constellation. I can create a rectangle and I'm going to set that size of the rectangle to 24 by 36 
So I'm going to make it 36 inches wide and 24 inches tall. So this is my rectangle. Now I need a surface that I'm going to evaluate. So I can create a surface from my boundary. So I can choose a boundary surface. And it creates a, a surface between my edges. So what I would like to do is find a way to easily create points that I can have control over on this region. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a jig. And my jig is going to be what's called an MD slider. And this MD slider is going to allow me to move my point around in both the X and the Y direction, the point on that surface. And I can do that by bringing out an evaluate surface capsule and I'm going to plug the MD slider into point and I'm going to plug the boundary surface into the surface input. So what's happening is there's a point there in the lower left that's moving around and I'm going to set this MD slider at one and one. The way Rhino is interpreting this is it's interpreting this point location by distance. So it's thinking of this new point to be one inch away from the origin in both the X and the Y. I want 1-1 one, one to be the top right hand corner of the surface. So much like we looked at the domain of the line, we need to look at the domain of the surface where the lower left hand corner is 0 and the upper right hand corner is 1-1. One, one. So to do that we have to tell Rhino to reparameterize the surface. So I can do this by right clicking on surface and I'm going to choose reparameterize. So now my jig is working the way I want it to. 1-1 one, one is the upper right. Okay, so I can copy and paste these a couple times. And now I have three points to work with. So it's, it's quite important in Grasshopper that you, you keep your definition very organized so that when you come back to it, um, you can understand your logic and how you were arranging things. So I have these three points, and I'm going to go ahead and draw a polyline. So I'm going to begin to create a relationship between these points and the polyline. Now I'm plugging in more than one capsule to the input of the polyline. So it's important that I hold down my shift key. Okay, so let's look at how these points in the MD slider now control the shape and the position of the line. Now I can also draw an interpolated curve through those points by bringing out an interpolate curve capsule and I can do the same thing I can use my shift key to plug multiple points or vertices into the interpolate curve capsule you notice the first time I plugged one point in I had an error with this capsule but as I plug the other two the error went away so I now have an interpolated curve through those points versus a polyline, which could be used, let's say, in the mimicry exercise. Something else worth pointing out is I have display full names turned on. So if you look at my inputs and my outputs, for instance, in this interpolate capsule, I can see the entire word vertices and degree and so on. By default, Grasshopper is set up where display full names is not on, and you're seeing just an abbreviation of those capsules. So I find it helpful to see the full names. So if my goal is filling this region with a constellation of points, 
it's going to take a while using this method. So let's look at another method which is more about chance, it's more serendipitous. What we can do is we can populate this region with a populate 2D capsule and there you see the, the, the populated points showing up and what it's looking for is it's looking for a region, a number of points and then the, the randomness of the capsule is set through the seed. So let's, let's set up our region or let's plug in our region. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a container and I'm going to use a geometry container and I'm going to plug my rectangle into that geometry container. So I can rename this. This is going to be my region. It's just a container. It's just holding that rectangle so I can move it down further in the definition. And I'm going to right click on this region and change the wire display to hidden so that when it's deselected it doesn't show the wire. Organization of these grasshopper definitions is, is key um, to when you come back and look at these definitions and you're trying to figure out what, what you did the last time. Um, the definition organization is really going to help you with that. So I'm going to plug in my region and now those 2D points are going to fill our 24 by 36 inch region. So what can I do with this populate 2D? I, I can control it. I can control it through the count. So I'm going to add a number slider that controls the amount of points. And I can increase or decrease those points. Now the chance operation for this is going to be the seed. So I can add a number slider for the seed. And that's going to shift those points around. Okay, so a couple things I can do. I can just add I can add a polyline capsule and just plug those points in and then I can control the count so I'm just gonna reduce this count so that you can see that this polyline is just going in order now the, the order of those points is, is random but it's just one polyline, one continuous polyline so what I can do is I can start to split this list of points that's coming out of the population. I can split this list into more than one and I can also do that by chance. I can do that with a random split list. So I'm gonna unplug this polyline by using my control key when I plug it in and I'm going to introduce a random split list. Okay, so it's looking for the master list which is coming out of the population. So Grasshopper is all about lists. Everything that you're working with is organized either as a list or a data tree structure. So now I have two lists coming out of the random split list and I can continue to split this in, into more than two but just to show you how that works so there's my my first list of points that split I can add another polyline and there I have my my second polyline and I can introduce some more um, chance control into this by creating a parameter for the seed.
so that is affecting how to split that list and now I can choose where to split that list so this this value here is um, a value between 0 and 1 so I can put in uh, or I can create a number slider that's between 0 and 1 by double clicking and using 0.5 So just a little more control over where that list is split. And I can add in some more points and change the arrangement of those points. Okay, so let's look at a few algorithms that I can use to control this field. I can create I can create or generate some patterns. So let's look at one called Delone. And the one that I want should be the Delone edges. So this was an algorithm that was created by Boris Delone. He was a Russian mathematician. He was also known as one of the first Russian mountain climbers. So he lived 1890 to, to 1980 so somewhere during that time he was <laughs> not only a, a mathematician but he was uh, one of the first Russian mountain climbers so let's look at what this capsule does so to to see this better in our viewport I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on this paint bucket this half white half green paint bucket and what that's gonna do is it's only gonna show me the capsules that I've highlighted so we get uh, a much nicer looking um, in this case a much nicer looking drawing or view of our definition so this Delaney mesh is looking for an input of points so I'm gonna plug in populate 2d and what it does is it it figures out a way to triangulate the points by ordering this list of points by, by distance and finding the closest points that can make the smallest triangle. So we see that happening through the Delaney edges. Another algorithm we can look at is a Voronoi, which is the Voronoi and the Delaney edges, they, they're, they're dual graphs of one another so they their geometry they work together to create these patterns so these this Boris Delaney and, and Gregory Voronoi who is another Russian mathematician they were working uh, about the same time as one another so this research was available to each of them so if I look at the, the Voronoi same thing it's looking for a list of points to be plugged in now these points, um, because I haven't set the boundary, are, are, are going on. Um, so I need to plug in that boundary, and we have that set up here. Our region can be our boundary. And we're creating the Voronoi pattern here. And if I go ahead and select my Deloney edges, And I'm going to reduce this number slider just to make this a little bit easier to see. So we can start to see how these algorithms are related to one another. A third generator or algorithm that we can look at was also developed in the 80s, except this time it was in the 1980s, um, something called Metaballs. It was, it was developed by... Jim Blinn, he's an American computer scientist who worked for NASA. So I'm going to go, out, go ahead and bring out the meta, meta ball capsule. And looking at the input, it's also looking for a list of points, which we can get from our populate 2D capsule. And it needs it needs a plane. By default, the XY plane is fine. 
it also interacts with an external point. So I can use one of my points that I made earlier for my evaluate surface and I can plug that in to point. It's using the populate 2D points as center points to create circles and where those circles intersect with one another it's trimming them out to make a closed region and I can experiment with adding more points or less points and changing the seed around to get various iterations so that's one of the things that Grasshopper is also really good for is, is, is to make iterations is to to look at variations of a drawing or of a design and use the associative properties and the parametric properties to do that okay so we have this geometry and one thing to note is it only exists in grasshopper at the moment we need to bake this geometry into rhino yeah, I know it's a, a strange term, but that's what we have to do. Because at the moment, it only exists in Grasshopper. There's nothing in Rhino. I'm just making a selection in Rhino, and nothing exists. So if I zoom in to this last capsule, I can right-click over it, and I can choose Bake. And it's going to ask me which layer I'd like to bake it on. I'm going to bake it on the default layer. Now that geometry actually exists in Rhino. So you have to bake it. The whole time we were working, it was only being displayed in Rhino. It didn't actually exist in Rhino. Let's go back to the definition that we looked at in the beginning of this video, which was the one that created our field of planes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close Grasshopper and I'm gonna show all of our geometry and what I'm gonna demonstrate here is I'm gonna demonstrate how to bring geometry from Rhino into Grasshopper so we'll start with this one plane and I'm gonna bring Grasshopper up again and I'm gonna open up a new definition so to bring this plane from Rhino to Grasshopper, it's not like an inverse bake. It's what I what I need to do is I need to create a capsule that will host that geometry. So I can choose the geometry capsule and I can right click and choose set one geometry and select my airplane. So now if I hide the geometry in Rhino, I can see my grasshopper geometry. So it's now a part of this grasshopper definition. And it's at the, at the moment, it's referencing this plane. So I need to have my Rhino file and my grasshopper file, file because every time I open this grasshopper definition it's going to be looking for this rhino file so to create my rip to create my array I can double click and bring out a rectangular uh, array capsule and I can plug this geometry in so at the moment it doesn't know what distance to array this in it looks it looks decent in the X but the Y direction we can see all these airplanes overlapping so it needs a cell to figure out the distance in the X and the Y so I can do that by using or making a bounding box and that creates a bounding box around the extents of that airplane that will also act as a cell or a way to define the distance between the X and the Y. So I'm going to plug that into the cell and now you see the Y array is correct. So I'm just going to organize this a little bit better because I need 
a parameter or a number slider that's going to control the X and the Y. And for now, I can keep that count the same. So that's con controlling the, the field or the amount of planes in the array. Okay, that's it for the intro to Grasshopper.